Boys and girls, thank you once again for joining with us for another online assembly. It's Christina here with you today from FPC Kids. Now, before we bring our message for today, we're going to start off our assembly by doing some singing. So I want everyone to join in the words and the music will be up on the screen for you to follow along with. So I want everyone singing their very best as we come to our course. Boys and girls, for our assembly today, we are going to be asking quite a difficult and important question. Now, all throughout your school life, I'm sure you've been asked questions every single year. And every year as you grow up, go up through school from P1 up to P7, I'm sure that the questions get harder and harder. And you know, some of those questions that you get asked are kind of very difficult to answer. And I remember when I was in P7 and P6, we had our Friday tests every Friday morning. And some of those questions were just way too hard and I usually couldn't answer half of them. But today we're going to be asking a question. So I need you to put your thinking caps on because it is quite a difficult question we're going to be asking. And it's not a question that we can answer fully because really no one can answer this question fully. But we're going to try our best to answer this question and hopefully help you to understand a little bit more about a great big topic. And the question we're going to be asking today is who is God? Now, like I said, this is a really difficult question to answer. And even the smartest people in the world cannot fully answer this question because God is just way above us. He's way above us to try to wrap our heads around who God is. But hopefully as we go through this question, as we break it down a little bit, we'll be able to understand and you'll be able to un understand a little bit more about who God is, what God is like and all different things about God and that will help us to know how we are to live our lives before God. So like I said, it is a difficult question to answer and in some of these things I'm not expecting you to know fully what or understand fully what we're saying but I want you to try your best as we ask this big question, who is God? And we're going to go about it this way. We're going to pretend that God is a person with met for the first time so maybe um, this year in school a new person has come into your classroom or maybe where you live a new person has come to live in the round where you live and you might ask questions about them to try to get to know them better and that's what we're going to do with God we're going to ask questions about him different things about him to help us to understand a little bit more about him. So the first question we're going to ask is where did God come from? So maybe there's a new person in your classroom or you, or you know a new person, you might ask where did you come from? Did you come from around here or you've come from far away? And that's what we're going to ask about God. Where did God come from? Now this isn't an easy question to answer, it's quite a difficult question because the thing is we are told in the Bible that God didn't come from anywhere. God has always been here. We are told that way back in the past, as far as you can go, God was there. And as far as, as you can go into the future, God will always be there. You see, unlike us, God doesn't have a birthday. We all have a birthday, it doesn't matter when it might be. We all have a birthday, a day when we were born and we celebrate it every year. But unlike us, God does not have a birthday. There was not a day when God was born because God has always been here, always in the past and always in the future. And just like the same way there'll be a day when we will all die, God will never die. God will always be here. We learn about that, especially in the book of Revelation in the Bible. We read that God liveth forever and ever. And so when we ask the question, well, where did God come from? Well, the question is, God did not come from anywhere. He's always been here. And again, that's really hard for us to wrap our heads around. But that's what the Bible teaches us. It's just something that we have to accept. We don't have to understand it, but we can accept it, that God has always been here. He doesn't have a birthday, or he doesn't have a day when he will die like you and I. So that's the first thing we learn about God, where God came from. Next question we're going to ask is, well, what does God look like? 
What does God look like? You know, some people, when they think about God, they have an image in their head of what God looks like. And often people think that God looks like you and me, but that's not what the Bible teaches us. We are told that God doesn't look like you or me. We are told that God doesn't have arms. He doesn't have eyes. He doesn't have a body. He doesn't have hair. He doesn't have ears. We are told that God is a spirit. And again, that's hard for us to try to picture in my, our minds what God might look like. But at least we know what God doesn't look like. He doesn't look like us. He doesn't have hands or arms or legs. Anything like that there. We're told that God is a spirit. Now you might say to me, if you know your Bible really well, you might say, well, Christina, it says in the Bible about the hands of God and the eyes of God. So is the Bible lying? Well, no, the Bible cannot lie. But what does that mean? Well, that helps us to understand a little bit more of what God is like. Because the same way of talking about God having hands, what is your hands there for? Especially maybe if you're at the side of a road and you're with your mum or your dad or your granny or granddad, maybe you've got a little brother or sister with you, what will your mum and dad do? They might grab your hand or you might have to grab the hand of your little brother or sister. And why is that? It was to keep you safe when you cross the road to make sure no one runs out in front of cars. And that's to keep you safe and to guide you along. And when the Bible talks about God having hands, it's not that, he, that God has actual physical hands, but it's mean that God is there to lead and to guide us and reminds us about what God does. In the same way with the eyes of God, what do you do with your eyes? You watch, you look. And God doesn't have actual eyes, but the, the Bible is saying the eyes of God reminds us that God sees everything that we do and he's always watching. So although the Bible sometimes talks about the arms and the hands and the eyes of God, the Bible tells us that he does not actually have physical arms or hands or eyes, but it helps us to learn a little bit more of what God is like and what he does for us. So what does God look like? He doesn't look like you or me, we're told that God is a spirit. So I hope you're still with me. I know it's difficult, but I know he's a pretty smart. So have keep on going. And next thing we're gonna ask, well, where does God live? If you meet a new person, you might say to you, well, where do you live? And I might say, oh, I live down the street or I live in the town over. We're gonna ask, well, where does God live? Well, first thing we have to say is that God is everywhere. We're told that in the Bible, he is everywhere, but God does live in a place. In that place, you might have guessed already, is heaven. God lives in heaven. And that's not just some made up imaginary place. That's a real place. And we are told that God lives there in heaven. And he doesn't live there alone. We're told he lives with some other things there in heaven. We're told he lives with his angels. And we're also told that he lives with Christians. Those people who are saved and who have died, that they went to heaven because they've had their sins washed away. And in Acts chapter seven, we read there that God saying that heaven is my throne. That is where he lives. He lives there with his angels and with Christians, those who are saved and who have their sins washed away, who have died and went to heaven. Last thing we're going to ask about God, and this is an important thing, is what does God like and what does God not like? If you need a new person, you're going to want to know what their likes and their dislikes are. Because if you want to get to know that person, maybe you want to hang out with that person, you're going to want to know the things that they like. If they like going um, to the beach, you might want to go to the beach. But if they don't like the water, you're not going to want to go to the water. You want to find out what they like and what they don't like. And that's the same with God. You know, the Bible tells us the things that God loves and the things that God hates. And we're gonna start with the things that God hates. And one of the things that God hates is sin. He hates sin, he cannot look upon sin. And what is sin? Well, sin is when we disobey God and we disobey God's law that's written for us in the Bible. I know we're told there that the wages of sin is death. God hates our sin, he cannot look upon our sin. So what can we do about our sin? Well, we then go to what God loves. I know we're told that although God hates our sin, we are told that God loves the world. And we're told there in John chapter three, verse 16, that very famous verse that probably most of you know, where it says, God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son that whosoever believeth in him should not perish, but have everlasting life. And you know, God loves the world and he loves you. He hates your sin, but he loves you. And he wants your sins taken away. He wants you to come and ask him into your heart to take away your sin. And what's the only way you can do that? Well, this verse tells us God gave his only son, the Lord Jesus Christ, to die on the cross to take away your sin. And because we know now this about God, we see how important it is for you to have your sins washed away. Because if you have sin in your heart, God hates your sin. But you know, he loved you so much that he sent his son to die on the cross to, for you to be able to get your sins taken away. If only you come and ask him into your heart to take away your sins. And we hope that you'll do that today. 
that you'll come. Realise how much God hates your sin. Now you need to have your sins taken away. And the only one that can do that is the Lord Jesus Christ. So hope you enjoyed our lesson today on who is God. And I know there's a lot in there for you to wrap your head around. And it is a difficult question to answer, but hopefully you know a little bit more about who God is and what God is like and where God lives and what God likes and what God hates. And hopefully with, with that knowledge, you'll realise that you need to have your sins taken away. So boys and girls, we're going to finish up there for today and we're going to let you get back to your classes and back to your work. But before we do that, we're going to finish off with a word of prayer. So we're going to A, fold our arms, B, bow our heads, C, close our eyes. And we're going to ask God to come and help us to remember these important things that we've learned today. Let's pray, boys and girls. Our dear Heavenly Father, we thank thee, Lord, for this lesson on who is God. And Lord, although it is a difficult question to answer, Lord, we thank thee that today we learned a little bit more about thee and who thou art, Lord. And we just pray that thou'd help us to remember even that important thing, Lord, about how you hate sin and how we need to have our sins taken away. But you provide it away, Lord. You sent your son to die on the cross to take away our sins. And Lord, be any boy or girl listening who's not saved, that they'll come and ask the end to their hearts to take away their sins. With us now, Lord, give us help, we pray. For your sake, we ask these things. Amen. Amen.